Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Foster and today I'm going to be sharing with you what it's like traveling um, through the coronavirus outbreak. So I actually am currently based in Ireland. Um, I've lived here for the last about year and a half. Um, I would have studied back in Canada for three years and that's when you probably can see some of my other videos about my college experience and stuff like that. I haven't uploaded in a long time so I apologize but I did want to kind of upload this video because um, since moving to Ireland I've obviously traveled a lot more um, and now I kind of wanted to share what it was like traveling while kind of the world is starting to shut down and stuff. Um, so kind of to just go through um, what the trip was originally planned as. So I originally planned a round trip flight from Dublin to Frankfurt. Um, so I had booked this trip around Valentine's Day. Reiner had like an amazing seat sale. So I was able to get a round trip flight with my carry-on bag for like less than 50 euros. So it was Dublin to Frankfurt. Um, so I left on the 12th of March and then I was supposed to return back to Dublin on the 18th of March. So um, yeah, so I booked that flight and all was well and I booked my hostels and stuff like that. So in kind of taking advantage of the time that I had off um, from work, because I'm currently working in the Students' Union for a year, um, that kind of I got after I finished my honours degree in Ireland over here. Um, so basically that trip I kind of had a week long, but I decided, look, I know I'm, I'm spending like a week in Frankfurt, but why don't I actually go to other places in Germany? So I had originally planned that I... Um, fly into Frankfurt and I go to Cologne so my plan was to spend from the 12th until the 14th in Cologne so that's like two nights um, but like one full day because on the 12th I was getting to Cologne really late um, and then also on the 14th I was leaving for Berlin quite early so then Berlin I had planned on being in Berlin from the 14th until the 17th so that was like three nights um, and then I had planned on going from Berlin to Frankfurt on the 17th and basically spending a full kind of day in um, Frankfurt. Um, now I had one night in Frankfurt booked as well, um, but I kind of had to cut my trip short because when I arrived in Germany, so when I left Dublin Airport on the 12th, um, the Taoiseach announced measures um, to combat the coronavirus outbreak. So the coronavirus had just started to kind of um, break out in Ireland here. I mean, it was huge in Italy and Spain, and there were travel advisories against um, traveling to both of those countries just because of the risk of um, contracting coronavirus. Now, obviously, I'd been kind of keeping up to date with what the news was like over the week prior to this trip, and there weren't any major advisories for Germany. So I decided, like, I would actually... Um, continue to go to Germany as planned. So on the 12th of March, those measures were announced. Um, the colleges were um, closing down until the 29th of March. And um, that was literally a crazy day because that morning I actually had a conference. So I had a, a meeting that I was attending in Dublin for my job. And it was like a work kind of event that I was going to. And then from Dublin, my plan was to go right to the airport um, to catch my kind of evening flight to Frankfurt. And during that meeting, um, which kind of started just before noon, um, the Taoiseach had announced that the colleges were all closing across the country at 6 p.m. that night. So it was like, it was like that was when like hit, shit hit the fan kind of, as I'd say. So um, I was like, for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, should I be going on this trip? Like, should I be going to Germany? Like, should I be traveling if there's a potential that um, I'm not gonna like be able to go there because if the coronavirus is shutting Ireland down, is it shutting Germany down? Um, but I decided that after that meeting, I would still make my way to the airport. I would get on the flight. I mean, I, I didn't hear anything from Ryanair around um, my flight being changed or anything of that nature. I was looking very closely at the news and stuff, so I decided still to go. So I boarded my flight 
Um, the flight was normal. I mean, they, they do the shopping channel and all of that on Ryanair. If you've never done a Ryanair flight, I definitely would recommend it. I've done quite a number of Ryanair flights in my travel experiences um, while living abroad and prior to living abroad. Um, but this was just your typical Ryanair flight and I decided to sit back and relax. I decided to have a couple of um, apple like ciders and stuff like that just because I was going on holidays. Um, so we landed in Frankfurt. Again, it all seemed like pretty normal. I got on the train, got to Cologne. I got to Cologne at around like 11.30 p.m. So it was really late um, that I got to Cologne. So obviously like most things were closed other than like there were like the bars and stuff that were open. Um, but it wasn't like like hopping, if you know what I mean. Um, so I went to my hostel, I checked in and then I met this one other guy. So he was an older man and he actually um, was from a country that had just recently closed their borders. So he was stuck in Germany. He was telling me his experience about being stuck in Germany and, and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my, that's not good at all. But I thought, you know what, I'm within the EU, like I'm, I'm based in Ireland. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it, but I am going to basically keep an eye on, on what continues to transpire where this is concerned. So I got up, so on the 13th, I got up um, at like a normal time. Um, now Germany is one hour ahead of Ireland. So um, I kind of like lost an hour, if you know what I mean. But I was up kind of at a, a normal time. So I went into the little, which is which was about a three minute walk from the hostel. And I got a few little bits like for my breakfasts and, and stuff like that. And everything seemed pretty normal. Like I noticed that there were some like of the shelves, like where the noodles and stuff were that weren't like totally stocked, but like it just seemed like normal. Um, so I decided to have my breakfast in the hostel and I decided to kind of walk around Cologne. I went to the chocolate museum, the Lint Museum. I would 100% recommend it. Um, it wasn't very busy on that day, but it was open still, um, as were a couple other museums, although most of the government museums had just decided to close on that day. So on the 13th, the Friday, they had decided to close. So a lot of it was just kind of walking around. Um, but then I did still get to the chance to enjoy some dinner and going out. And I didn't go out to any bars or anything, but I did go out for dinner and I did walk around and I did um, go to the museums and stuff like that, the ones that were open at least. Um, so that was good. That was a that was a good day. I ended up getting back to the hostel um, that evening. Um, I went to this like vegan buffet place, which was really cool in Cologne, which was something I definitely would recommend. Um, but that evening I um, kind of had a couple of, uh, they have these things in Germany called lime fits. They're amazing. I tried it in that vegan restaurant and I love them. So I bought a couple at the convenience store um, just down the street from the hostel and I had a couple of those. Um, but the hostel was really weird because there was no one else in the hostel. Like the the guy who was there the first night, he ended up checking out of the hostel because he was actually going to be with some friends that were living in Germany as well. So he checked out of the hostel. Um, and so it was just me in the room. And when I was kind of in the common area, um, another kind of couple came in. They were from South America and they were telling me how basically they were like stuck in Germany and they were very worried and they were trying to catch flights and stuff like that and so I didn't really have a huge conversation with them but yeah that was kind of um cologne it was it was really like other than actually being in the hostel um everything outside seemed a little bit different but pretty normal like you know I, I it wasn't a huge impact like Obviously, some of the things are closed and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I do remember in Cologne, I did go shopping as well because I needed to get a bathing suit. Um, so the hostel in Berlin has had a pool. Um, so I had to get a bathing suit because I had forgotten my bathing suit at home. Um, so I did that. I went to Penny's and um, stuff like that. They call it Primark in Germany. But um, I got a bathing suit and I remember just being like normal and stuff like that. Um, then I ended up um, going, so on the 14th, I ended up having to leave Cologne very early because I had an early morning flight. So I decided to catch an easy jet flight from 
um, Cologne to Berlin. It was the cheapest option for me to travel between the two cities. Um, so um, ironically, that one way was almost the same price as the round trip um, from Dublin to Frankfurt, but that's another story and that isn't uncommon um, or unheard of. But anyways, um, so I ended up getting a text message that morning from the company that I was flying with. I was flying with EasyJet um, and basically I was like, oh shit, like what if they've cancelled my flight and stuff like that? Because um, companies had started kind of saying that they were going to ground flights and stuff at that point. Um, and so I was like, oh no, like what's going to happen? Um, but it ended up just being that their, their oven wasn't working, so they weren't going to do like food service, which I was like, okay, no big deal. So I went through like security. Um, security was like fairly normal. It was a very small airport. It was Cologne airport. So it was, it was quite a like small, small airport. Like I wouldn't really classify it as anything like major. I, it was just normal. Um, I basically then was just kind of waiting around for my flight and then um, we got on our flight and um, when I kind of got on the flight it was we were in a a um, aisle of like there were three and three right so the flight was very dead like actually there were probably about I want to say about like 12 to 15 people on the plane um it was quite an unusual like thing um I don't know if that's like common um but it was very dead on this plane and it was myself in the middle seat that's where I was assigned and then some other gentlemen um at the window seat and so I decided because there was no one else sitting beside us in the aisle seat, I decided to move over to the aisle seat, and so it was just like your basic like procedure for, with your flight. Um, they did explain like you know with coronavirus, they were like, please be mindful of the coronavirus pandemic. Please use your um, coughing and sneezing etiquettes, and make sure you throw out your rubbish and blah 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 blah. Um, that was like a very like common sense type thing. Um, but it was something that was in addition to what they would normally say on a flight. So it was something like you knew that they were escalating in terms of like, you know, they, everyone was starting to talk about coronavirus and it was starting to become a very common thing. Um, I got to Berlin. Um, I checked into my hostel in Berlin. I checked into a hostel called Plus Berlin. Absolutely amazing hostel. Uh, um, I would recommend it. I really want to go back again. Um, because it just was amazing. Like the facilities were great. Um, the staff were amazing. Um, you know, they had a bunch of activities planned, but unfortunately because of the coronavirus outbreak, they canceled all their activities, um, just because of the social distancing protocols and stuff like that. Um, so I got to Berlin and I asked if the pool was still open and at that stage it was, um, now that was on the 14th of March um, and so I decided to go for a swim and I had a few hours to kind of kill. I'd been kind of quite tired from like traveling really early in the morning from Cologne to Berlin, um, you know, with the planes and, and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, okay, this is, uh, this is fair. I'm going to go for a swim and stuff like that. So I went for a swim um, and then I decided to kind of in the afternoon just kind of look around Berlin. I went to the east um, side gallery so this hostel is really close to the east side um, gallery so like the the wall the Berlin wall the east wall um, it's really close to like um, a couple of the main like there's a district Kresiesberg or something um, it's really close to there um, it's uh, what, what else would it be close to it's really close to like there's a big mall so there's like an Aldi um, there's like another kind of grocery store um, there's this really cool like vegan grocery store which had like all vegan products in it it was called vegan Z um, but like yeah so I just kind of walked around I ended up going to this like Mexican restaurant for um, like a lunch slash dinner um, which was really cool um, and then that evening, later on in the evening, I met, I went to the bar in the hostel. So the hostel had this really nice restaurant and bar. And um, 
I went to um, that restaurant and bar and um, met a couple of Irish um, women. So that was on the Saturday evening um, and they were leaving Sunday. And um, that was really nice. We had a few drinks in, in that kind of bar and stuff. But at that stage, all of the nightclubs in Berlin were closed. All of the bars were closed. I think there was one um, bar like across the street that was open that they were going to try to go to. And then the next day I heard that they couldn't get into it. Um, so at that stage, everything had really closed down in Germany. Um, on Sunday, I ended up kind of like getting up again. Um, I made myself some breakfast and then I kind of went out walking and it was like super strange, like everything was closed. Um, I tried to go to this like district that um, a couple of people had recommended to me, which they said had really good like vegan food. Um, and so I tried to go to it and like when I went there, I took the like the metro rail kind of situation thing and I got there and it was like a ghost town. It was an absolute ghost town. So I kind of just walked around. Um, I ended up walking to like Charlie, like Checkpoint Charlie and I looked at that. Um, I ended up finding this Indian restaurant um, that was open. I was like the only person in the restaurant. It was insane. Like everything else around it was closed. All the supermarkets were closed. Everything was closed. Um, so I was like, oh wow, this is really odd. Now, one of my friends had warned me that supermarkets do close in Germany on Sundays. So I was a little bit aware of that. But like all the restaurants were closed, all the museums were closed, everything was just closed. Um, and there weren't very many people out, if I'm being honest, as well, because it was, it was kind of like people were just kind of walking around, but it wasn't just a normal, like, it was very nice out, the weather was lovely, but, like, people weren't out, it was really strange. So then I kind of continued to talk, I saw an article, one of my friends had forwarded me an article stating that um, Ireland at that stage had said that anyone traveling with the in the EU should be on high alert. Um, so I was like, okay. Um, I mean, I was kind of at that stage on high alert. I had gone to a number of stores and tried to find some hand sanitizer. And I really kind of removed myself as much as possible from like, you know, being around other people and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, okay, this is the best that I can do. But obviously I was staying in a hostel um, during that kind of travel period. So it was a little bit strange. Um, so then that Sunday I ended up kind of continuing to look at the news and um, I noticed that they had made an announcement that the Irish government was going to meet Monday, um, sometime on Monday to discuss further measures. Um, now that same day Germany had also decided to close its borders between Austria, um, France and Italy. So all three of those countries which they border, they pretty much were closing their borders off, which I was like, okay, um, interesting, because if anyone really knows the EU, you know that like the EU is all about free movement and movement of goods, and I know Germany is a huge, like, they love the EU, um, you know, on a government level, I can't say on a personal level, but from my experience, like, they really... Um, like the EU and, and are supportive of the EU. So I thought, yeah, this is a really strange thing. Um, I then obviously had that other newspaper article um, that basically was like saying that the Irish government were going to meet again to discuss even further what they were going to do. So then that evening around seven o'clock that night, I made a decision to book a flight back to Dublin. So I just decided, yeah, I'm booking my flight Monday, the very like first flight that I can get on. Um, I'm booking it back to Dublin from Berlin. Um, now I paid, I, I booked on Aer Lingus. It was the only flight. I literally searched in Google Flights, um, Berlin to Dublin, um, Monday, the 16th of March. And those were the two flights that came up. They were the cheapest flights. They were most direct. So I booked an Aer Lingus flight. It left at like 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, I was pretty bummed. Like, obviously, I was looking forward to spending another day in Berlin. Um, I was looking forward to um, spending time in Frankfurt. But obviously, at that stage, I knew that 
it was important that I got back to Ireland. Um, now I'm currently on a working, a graduate working scheme. So I'm a Irish resident um, for the purposes of working as a graduate. So after studying for a year um, in Ireland, so I earned a level eight honors degree. And after getting that honors degree, I was entitled to a one year working visa extension. So I was like, if they're going to close the borders, I wasn't sure if I would have been able to get back into Ireland. Now, obviously I work still and I was able to work from home and stuff like that. So for me, that was a huge worry having a job and potentially not being able to get back into Ireland was a big worry for me. So I was very thankful that I was like, yeah, I need to leave. Um, I need to make sure that I'm safe, that I can go back to Ireland, that I can go back to my house and I can isolate for the 14 days um, and do it before the borders start closing, before they start restricting people other than Irish citizens into the country. So I decided to um, do that. So I got on my, my flight. Now, Berlin Airport was such a different experience because I remember going to the terminal and they would only let a certain number of people into the security area. Um, and they they kind of like blocked it off. So like if you were like waiting in, in the queue, um, you had to kind of wait in a certain area outside of the security area because they would only let a certain number of people in at a time. And I remember it being quite packed. And it was almost like everyone had this sense of fear on their face. Like it was the strangest thing. Like it really like kind of tore back onto myself as well because I was like, ooh, should I be like afraid? Like obviously I booked an emergency flight back to Ireland. Um, but I like for the first time really felt like I was traveling through COVID. Like obviously with the museums and that being closed in Berlin and with the bars and that being closed um, and everything being shut down, that was a really odd experience, but I was experiencing that alone. Whereas this was like, I was actually experiencing this with everyone else who was in a panic to get to um, wherever they needed to go. Um, so I remember going through that kind of security and um, that was, you know, normal airport security and stuff like that. Um, but then I kind of went to like where the gates were that I had to get in. in. So Germany is a part of the Schengen area so the Schengen area is a free travel area where people who are citizens of Schengen don't require passports to travel um, and then the non Schengen area is an area where you do require a passport to travel and you are checked um, to travel when you enter and exit the Schengen area so living in Ireland Ireland even though it's a part of the European Union it is not a part of the Schengen area so I was required to go back through passport control. I had gone through passport control in Frankfurt. So entering the Schengen area, I had gone through um, passport control. I had to get my passport stamped. And now if you're an Irish citizen, which I'm not, I'm a Canadian citizen. An Irish citizen doesn't get their passport stamped. They don't have any visa requirements um, because they are an EU citizen, but they still have to go through passport control. It's not considered a domestic flight. In that case, it'd be considered an international flight. Um, but for myself, obviously being a non-EU citizen, I had to go through the full passport control. So that was fine. I got my passport stamped um, and I went into like the, the area where everyone kind of sits. Um, now this airport was quite busy. There was a duty free, it was a small duty free. Um, that was the first time that I noticed someone was wearing gloves handling stuff. Um, and I noticed that she was very much like asking people to use their debits and their credit cards. Um, that was the first time that, again, I noticed people were really keen on like use debit or credit. Um, being in Berlin and the restaurants in Berlin, they all wanted me to use cash. This was the first place where everyone wanted me to use debit and credit. Um, and again, the gloves were on. Um, I got on my flight, on my Aer Lingus flight. It was... Again, it wasn't busy at all. It was not dead, but it wasn't packed. Like it was, again, people were spread out quite far from each other. Um, and there were not as many people as what you would typically expect. 
on a Monday um, morning kind of flight. So that was a little bit odd again. Um, the other thing that I really found odd about that flight was there was no in-flight service. So there was no, um, like normally Aer Lingus would sell drinks and snacks and sandwiches. They didn't do any of that. Um, they didn't even come around with like a bag to like let you throw out your rubbish. It was like there was no service whatsoever. Um, and again, that was probably due to the coronavirus outbreak. They didn't want to have the interaction with people, which is fair enough. It's a health and safety matter, and I'm not making a complaint against the airline. Aer Lingus is a wonderful airline. I've flown them a number of times back to Canada to see family and, and friends and stuff like that. Um, but during this time, it was a different experience. It was it was less personal and for obvious reasons with the coronavirus. So I got back to Dublin Airport. Um, I ended up going through the passport control because again, Ireland is not in the Schengen area. So I had to go through the passport control. Now I have a non-EU passport, but I have an Irish residency permit. So I present my Irish residency permit along with my passport and I pretty much get in. Like they just, usually they'll verify with one or two questions like, you know, what are you doing for work or um, where are you living or something of that nature just to make sure that you are who you say you are. So I got that and that was fine. I got through um, and then when I got through, um, I just had like a carry-on bag. So when you go into Dublin after immigration, you go into like the luggage carousel area. Now, obviously I walked past that um, and then when I kind of exited the airport, um, I was given a pamphlet, um, a coronavirus pamphlet. And there are people with like masks on giving everyone pamphlets who had just traveled. And these pamphlets were around like the symptoms of coronavirus and, and everything to do with coronavirus. Um, now, I had traveled back on the Monday, so I wasn't required to self-isolate. I was required to self-quarantine because I hadn't come back from Italy or Spain. Now, since then, Ireland has enacted a full-on self-isolation um, situation for anyone who's traveled. But at that stage, um, it had not been enacted yet. So one of my friends actually picked me up from the airport because um, I obviously was in very good contact with my friends back in Ireland about this situation. And as it was unraveling, I was asking for advice. I was like, what should I be doing? Um, and so... Um, one of them picked me up from the airport. It's super kind of him to do that because he was worried about me having to get on public transit and stuff like that. So he picked me up from the airport um, and then we kind of drove back. I had to go to the grocery store because I had to get a few bits. Um, this grocery store was almost bare. Like, it was the first time seeing a grocery store bare. Like, there were no, like, vegetables, like, frozen vegetables. Um, a lot of the pastas were gone. It was crazy um and it was like the first experience um being in like kind of pandemic situation persona um yeah so that's my experience um traveling through the coronavirus i haven't traveled since obviously i've i've stayed in ireland and um it is you know not a time to be traveling at this moment i i am a firm believer of um, taking on the advice that the health officials are giving, that the World Health Organization that is giving, the health service executive, um, any sort of government organization, do listen to their advice and do socially distance yourself and do um, listen to what they're saying in terms of travel. Um, since then, Ireland has put a 30-day travel ban within the EU. Um, they've grounded a number of flights and they've said that people who are not traveling for essential reasons should not be traveling. So again, um, that was just my experience traveling kind of at the start of this pandemic. I decided to leave at a time that I decided to leave and that I felt like was a good time that I decided to leave and I am thankful that I left at that time. But yeah, that's my experience and thank you for listening and until next time, talk to you later. Bye!